Okay. Um, thanks for coming. No, no, it's fine. Um, just before we... Uh, uh, my name is Phil Kweski. With me are Vasya, Natalia and Martin. And we are part of the international organizers team that uh, does the international work for uh, Sea Spring. Um, just as a short introduction, I would like to just talk about a few things. Um, first up, there's like, um, there will be an introduction, there will be highlights of this year, and then we'll have a lessons learned session where we talk about like what, what went well this year and what we can improve. And at the end, we can talk about um, what we want to do next year. Um, I think we're 10 minutes late, but uh, we'll, we'll go through the int introduction really quickly and uh, the highlights. Okay. Um, so, the overview. Um, so, as every year, the, the goal was to um, improve existing and, and write new articles across communities and, and countries. And uh, this year we had 31 communities in 29 languages because we had like two communities in the Serbian Wikipedia and two communities in the Romanian Wikipedia. Um, plus we had three communities from um, outside CE, which were um, in Iran with Farsi and in Israel with Hebrew and Italian in Italy. And um, what the international grant covers in this like contest, which is mostly organized by you local organizers, is um, like covering the local prizes for um, communities who can't afford uh, the prizes themselves. And um, all the bank transfers that go with that. And there's also an international prize, which um, we still have to double out, I think. Okay, so um, what happened this year? Um, Natalia, do you want to oh, do that? Yes, sure. Okay. Okay, so the major change this year is the change of the fiscal sponsor, so the organization which reimburses the local organizers' money for the prizes. Last year it was done by, by Wikimedia Poland, and this year Wikimedia Austria took over, mostly because it was much, much easier to do the paperwork with, uh, with the Austrian chapter uh, for the legal reasons. Those of us who had the pleasure of doing it last year with Wikimedia Poland. Remember how much we needed to get from you, mm, how much documentation uh, and so on. And it was not uh, the case with Austria, so this year it is uh, who did it. So uh, as for now, 13 communities uh, have received reimbursements uh, uh, and prizes. The reimbursement process is still ongoing, I think, until October 5th. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So, uh, there are still some communities which uh, haven't asked for the reimbursement. Uh, Bosnia, Esperanto, Tatar, Belarus and Kazakhstan. And uh, uh, as far as it goes, as far as I know, with Media Austria made a great job with uh, we're taking care of the process, but there were some difficulties, which I also know from the Polish perspective, and it was that buying prizes uh, through online shops was not that easy as it would seem. There were, there were some problems with the credit cards and with the payments, and sometimes it took a long, long time, a lot of effort and a lot of resources, um, and by resources I mean the, the time of the Media Austria uh, staff to to do it, so maybe this is something which we would need to come back to during the lessons learned. So there were some more improvements and changes which we did, and uh, the first one is that uh, Sea Spring worked with other pro uh, other projects within the movement. Mm, the Ethno Carpathians. Uh, is there someone here who is not familiar with the Ethno Carpathian project? Everyone knows. Okay, so. The Ethno Carpathians was a project held with Wikimedia Poland and the State Ethnographic Museum uh, and some other chapters. Basically, Wikimedia volunteers and ethnographers went to some place in the Carpathian Mountains where they documented the local folklore, local clothes, and local art. It's one of my favorite projects ever, so this is why I'm pushing the knowledge about it. Uh, so we have Sea Spring working with it. Uh, with it. 
the ethnographers from Poland presented a list of articles about uh, Carpathian ethnography and invited people from the sea region to write about it during sea in spring and we had small prizes and it was a success. Uh, also, there was some other projects, Wiki Loves Earth and 100 Wiki Days, and in a moment, Vasya will tell you all about it, because if we have the 100 Wiki Days sorcerers with us, so why would I bother? And the Europeana <coughs> project, and also, which also Vasya will tell you in a moment, we supported some topics which we found important, uh, which, is the, which is the content gender gap. So, come on, Vasya. Yeah. Uh, yeah, okay, so I'll just fill the time until you come here. <laughs> uh, yeah, also there was a great initiative from the Azerbaijani community uh, to support the creation of articles about their community. They came up with the idea that they will provide some very sweet, sweet prizes to the communities, which will, uh, the people in each community who will write the, more, the most about, uh, about their country, which came out pretty awesome because it really motivated people and it was cheap and successful. Uh, also, two of the winners from of the UNESCO challenge were from the CEO region, which also came up from the uh, from combining this project with uh, with Sea Spring. I was about to tell you about the um, Sea Women. So um, you know we had. Um, even in the um, proposal, project proposal phase, um, decided that um, gender gap is an issue which we want to cover, uh, at least in those communities which are uh, willing to pay more attention to this, but also in the international outreach of the Sea Spring. Uh, we had um, a little bit ambitious uh, measures like uh, at least 100 editors uh, and at least 1,000 articles in non-sea languages. Uh, that are to be written about sea women, uh, sea topics uh, generally, but sea women especially. So after a point when we realized that we are not performing well here, we haven't invested enough attention and, and efforts in this, um, the idea came that uh, we can stimulate, we can uh, have a little bit like bribe <laughs> uh, editors from non-sea um, um, uh, communities to write about sea women by sending them postcards. Um, the postcards were from Bulgaria just because, for the only reason that uh, I, um, for each uh, editor who wrote at least 10 articles uh, about sea women, um, they would receive a postcard with the first Bulgarian wiki postage stamp. Uh, so for those of you who cared to be here now during our session, I, I have one postcard for you. Um, uh, post stamp, sorry. So um, this is the special thing about it is that it's um, uh, the second um, postage stamp about Wikipedia, uh, with the Wikipedia logo in the world and the first for our region. So um, there is some really uh, incentive. It proved out uh, to, to really be um, motivational for, for editors, not only for our region but also from abroad. So we had like um, more than 300 articles uh, on sea women written around the world in like, um, I think that we had it in the midterm report, but it was like in 10, 12 yeah. different languages, um, most of which were outside of sea. Uh, so this was like, at least we tried to um, be up to the measure which we ourselves set in the beginning. Um, maybe this is a good idea to start with next time. So um, since this postcard is, uh, post stamp is going to be valid for the next two years as well, this still can be incentive for, for other people. But it's also, also this nice thing to have a postcard with wiki postage stamp. Directly focus. Okay, this is the, another thing that we improved because last year we we started to have a Sea Spring blog, which is hosted by Wikimedia Poland, and we wanted to use it as a way to uh, encourage people to write articles. But last year we we were still trying to find a way how to use this blog in a in a meaningful way and how to use it to. To really, really help people find topics, we had some better and worse ideas. But I think this this year we came up with something that really, really was nice and worked. 
because we came up with the idea that every week we will write a blog post about the countries uh, to which the week is dedicated to. So if the week was for like Poland and let's say Azerbaijan, we wrote a blog post about those two countries trying in a hopefully fun way um, point out the topics which may be of interest and uh, it kind of worked because the during like according to our uh, Facebook statistics there were 160 to 430 viewers of every post only though and we are talking only about those who who saw them on Facebook we didn't have blog statistics so we are not sure probably it could be even more from other sources so this is probably something nice uh, which we did this year. We tried to rotate so that um, uh, we uh, we have like different weeks to have different people to write about. It was a bit voluntelling <laughs> process, but also um, um, I remember that I volunteered for at least two topics which I was not like voluntold. <laughs> so um, I think that this is one thing which uh, next years we can improve on, like having more people writing about the, uh, writing for the blog about these. Um, uh, contest and uh, it will be interesting from your point of view whether weekly update is um, often enough, whether whether we can make it a bit more often. Uh, in these weekly updates we have like the, covering the thematic weeks. So each of these blogs, uh, blog posts contains um, like three, even some, some weeks four countries um, uh, covered and um, since there is no in, in deciding which countries are in this week, there was no uh, some um, elaborate uh, decision to, to how to combine the countries. So there was uh, uh, it was it, it was interesting how to find the common denominator between all the countries, how to find something interesting to say for each country, and how to link the countries, which are uh, not obligatory connected in some way. So how to make from something random something more structured. Uh, one of the things which um, probably if we can show the uh, collages, uh, one, one of the things which this year happened was that for each of these countries we tried to have a different collage of the um, of the uh, flags of these countries. Some of them are really very... Okay. Yeah, for instance this one or... Yeah, no, I can't like so that. The, okay, uh, check, check the blog. Yeah. <laughs> and, in, and improve our um, yeah, retention rate, uh, so that at least we, we have something um, uh, also visual, not only uh, not only text material, but also something visual to to be appealing. Okay, I just want to point out the the prize for the best um, title goes to Martin because he wrote the title "Want to Kill Two Birds with One Stone," or maybe you're not that into bird killing. <laughs> <laughs> so it was quite fun. Okay, um, so statistics, the favorite topic of Sea Spring this year. <laughs> um, the problem is that like, Ace built a really, really great uh, statistics board last year, but the problem with it was that like, it's, it, the, the, the coding for it is so complex that you have to change a lot of things to make it work for the next year. So we're still working on that. Um, we hope we'll get it done by the end of the final. By the, by the time we have to hand in the final report, which is on the 14th of October. Um, the Baltic stats work more reliably. Um, we have a small decline, or not so small decline, of um, like from, from 2016 we had 5,920 articles in the list, like that, those are only articles created from the list on, on uh, Meta, and uh, 2017 we had 4,831. The problem with Botic is that he doesn't uh, that he doesn't include um, all languages and all the new languages that participate this year. So we have Slovenian in there, but Slovenia didn't participate this year. So um, we're missing like uh, Crimean, Tatar, and, and other languages. Um, so something for discussion afterwards would be like is the easy way to get the basic statistics. Um, PET scan would be one idea, but I think we can talk about that um, later. Okay, so what is it still to do for this year? Um, the deadline for the reimbursement sent to Wikimedia is the 5th of October, that applies to um, Esperanto and Belarus especially, but I think I've already talked to those uh, people. 
and um, what we hope would also be great would be to get some, some feedback from the local organizers for the final report. Um, that's the center of the mail, I think, three weeks ago, four weeks ago. Um, and the interesting thing would be like, what were your main challenges as, lo as a local organizer? Um, what, are, what was the impact, what were the results in your community? And um, are there any new ideas for like new topics we could we could um, use for next year? And it, was there any media publicity, for example? Like, is there anything we can we can show that, uh, towards the foundation? Okay. Um, final report is due on fourteenth October, and we'll also include the the lessons learned session which we're doing afterwards in the final report. Great. Um, then we're ready to the lessons learned. So how much time do we have left? Words 22. So we have like, what do we have, 40 minutes left? No, we have 70 minutes left. Okay. So for the next hour, um, we're going to do like a lessons learned session, which basically means um, Mark and will be creating a document and writing down points that went well. And as soon as we're done with like all the things that went well in, in, in this uh, year, we can talk about things we can improve. And the important thing is to, to focus on. Um, not so much in persons, but to focus on, on, on behavior and like processes instead and say, okay, we can improve this process by doing A, B, C, or D. Um, we're not discussing the general usefulness of, of this project. That's definitely something we can, we, we can talk about afterwards in, in a future um, session. But um, for lessons learned, it's more important to, to talk about like, okay, what can we improve for next year? Great, okay. Um, I think we'll just st stop it here. And because we're so a small group, we can just huddle together, I think. Good mm -hmm. morning. <laughs> allowed us to uh, do some uh, uh, um, shift, yeah. yeah, some adjustments in uh, uh, in uh, topics, mm -hmm. um, and also uh, it allowed for dramatic changes. Like in the uh, Romanian uh, community, we decided to go with uh, one uh, uh, list for two counts. Okay, yeah, yeah. because mm -hmm. the uh, two separate lists were too much for us. Yeah, yeah, we're like what. I also wrote a blog post at the beginning of the of the contest, like with tips on how to, to create the list. Because like in Austria, we the problem in in, in, in German is like a lot of the articles have already been written, so you can't use the, the, the standard topics or the most important or famous ones. So you need to go into detail and see okay uh, which articles haven't been written, like in Czech, for example, because that's a good indicator if, if it's been written in other Eastern European languages as well. But yeah, like. The experience of having done that twice before is, is definitely helpful. Also, so. I have a question whether you have some impression how many or are there many people in your communities who are following these lists? So isn't this an effort in vain? Because uh, I think that at least in Bulgaria this year we had a lot of people who were creating a lot of articles, not only like most of the people were were creating, but also most of the articles were created out of this list. So people were are interested in their own thing. They are focusing on C topics, but um, through their own perspective. And these lists are for very very basic reference. And I think that they are not followed, at least in Bulgaria. What is the situation in your countries? 
Uh, and languages? <laughs> in uh, Russian Wikipedia, we followed uh, the list and uh, almost covered all, all the lists. Uh, yeah. At the beginning, there were uh, 800 missing articles, and at the end, there were about uh, less than a hundred missing articles of all the lists. Uh, and uh, I want you to pay uh, attention for the lists the next year because uh, the Russian Wikipedia and, uh, then will have no uh, themes uh, to write about. Yeah. And we uh, maybe we will change the, the rules of the contest. Or so did you focus the rules on just the lists themselves? So only yes, articles uh, in the list? On the perhaps? articles uh, in yeah. lists who uh, uh, took part in the contest. Mm -hmm. um, which, means, which means that if someone created a, a like, neighboring article to or similar but not from the list, it's not going to be counted? Uh, no, it's uh, not counted. Wow. Yeah. Should be a little bit more flexible. Well, that's yes, Yeah, well, that's why we also did in the first year, in, in, or in the second year, in the general Wikipedia, because um, it makes it easy to, to check stuff that's been done. Mm -hmm. And you don't have to create the whole template and category system, just go through the list, and that's it. Mm -hmm. yeah. So that would be like the Baltic bot um, statistics, basically. Yes. Uh, yeah, uh, in Turkish case, uh, we allow to write anything on the one edit existing article. Yeah. Uh, but it's difficult to if it's difficult to give points, it's difficult. Mm. Uh, but most users prefer to go by the lists. Some users prefer uh, on if users prefer uh, to include them. Yeah. And it depends on them, I think. Um, uh, for example, if a country prefers a very detailed list, but in Turkish Wikipedia, very um, basic articles are missing. Mm. Then the users will create, instead of those very detailed articles, will create basic uh, articles which are not existing in the Wikipedia. Uh, but mm -hmm. if there is a match between the need of the Turkish Wikipedia and the articles in the list, they would follow the list. And there's also a problem, like, especially for, for, for Austria, for example. So, like, the basic articles have been covered by a lot of um, languages. But there's still languages out there which don't have them. So if you include them in a list, even though like many languages already have it, so, so that's always like a difficult thing to do. But maybe, maybe it would make sense to create like a basic list and a normal list. And the basic list is just like okay, those are typical things for that country, and that never change. That list never changes. And then you have the actual list, like for for Russia, for example, where you actually create. A um, hundred articles which have rarely been written about in, uh, in other languages. Mm -hmm. They also maybe have in some way to relate with the, the local. Um, the, the, what would be interesting to um, Russian readers, not only that, because we can easily invent thousand <laughs> articles which do not exist elsewhere, but would they be? relating with, with what the reader then would be interested in. So this makes the list yeah. <laughs> list building a very, very challenging problem. Yes. Um, there are very, very big downsides to both uh, actually options uh, <laughs> because uh, if you are uh, rigid uh, and you only go by lists, uh, then you don't provide flexibility, um, but you have the ease of uh, administration. Mm -hmm. you know, um, uh, you don't provide flexibility and you also uh, have to rely on quality of those lists which are not quite at all, yeah. uh, like in half of all the countries. Um, uh, but uh, if you allow flexibility um, uh, and you allow people to write on all the sites of countries uh, from this, not from this, um, then you uh, risk to get flooded with uh, um, articles for, for uh, um, Football players uh, <laughs> who, are, who are not quite uh, um, uh, informative, but yeah. they are uh, easily uh, doable. They're easily created. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. And uh, and you you may want to um, foresee that in the 
politics of uh, in the rules. Yeah, we had in Germany, uh, in, in German Wikipedia, we had someone who wrote articles about doves, like different species of doves, in which were like bred in East or are bred in Eastern Europe. So that was a very, very specific thing to do. But if, and someone else wrote about roses, <coughs> like just all the types of roses that were. Yes, and, and it's, uh, yeah, you have to decide if it's qualifiers, right? Yeah. Yeah, that's a, that's, that's a good point. Yeah. Yeah, I would also uh, like to add uh, that uh, when there are uh, propositions on the list, uh, if, for example in Polish uh, Wikipedia, you have to have uh, real, reliable sources mm. for this article. Yeah. And uh, why mm, the sources on the internet can be found uh, for some uh, of these uh, uh, these uh, proposi propositions, uh, to the others you have to like use books or something like that. And uh, uh, Normally, for example, in Polish, it is very badly, or maybe not very bad. It is not looked good upon uh, translating uh, articles from other version. Okay. That's interesting because, like, um, the English Wikipedia article usually is kind of decent, like there are sources provided, but is, that's not enough for, for Poland. It is uh, good if this is a fair featured article, for example. Yeah. Okay, but let's focus on like what went well. So we have like creating this is easy on the one hand and difficult on the other hand. Yeah. Um, anything else? Another point <coughs> is uh, dividing countries to weeks. So no one follows this weeks in Nazi. Yeah. Everyone creates article whenever yeah. they want. So yeah. Is it? Uh, Yes, in your country. We were very close. Here, in Serbia. Yeah. We were kind of different because we, <coughs> but of course we had our own budget which was larger, so it was easier for us. But we gave prizes uh, for for every week, so only for those people who were creating articles uh, related to the week topic. And at the end, we gave articles to people who created the most featured articles, but not, not necessarily pre, uh, following the topics. Mm -hmm. uh, the topics of the week. Because you need more time to create a featured article. Okay, that's something we can improve, but sorry, but can we just get through the what went well first and then we can do the improvement stuff? I have proposed, um, it was it was probably in February, I don't remember, but it was still when we were designing this year's list. Um, I, I, I had a proposal on the meta page and the meta talk that uh, um, we can design these lists in a different way. Like it was uh, in the, with respect to these uh, cross-border issues, uh, when, when something is claimed to be <laughs> To, to be on by, by two different nations, or well, um, everybody says it's theirs. Uh, so maybe we can try at least uh, part of these articles in this list to be uh, cross border, to be um, like the, with the idea of this um, ethnographic Carpathian project, which um, is on the border, as I understand, between Poland, Ukraine. Um, yeah, all of the Carpathian mountains. Yes, uh, so probably Romania or Hungary, I don't know. But uh, uh, to, to try to search for topics which are um, cross-cultural, cross-national, um, which make, for instance, a person, like a translator from one language, one sea language to, to, to another, or a person who was born in one country but had most of their career and life in another, so that we can build on this relationships between the countries and between our regions, if, if possible. Because we don't have it explicit yeah. now in our um, head goal list, but maybe this is one thing which will um, help in diversification of the topics and making us a bit more united. Okay. Um, thank you, Matthew. So, can we assume that like the whole reimbursement process went better than last year. Is that something that we can say was okay? Is there anyone here who actually got some money from Wikimedia Austria? Yeah, it was quite fast. Yeah. Uh, 
less than an hour. Less than an hour <laughs> from sending email. Okay. Yeah, you'll do it. Well, you will have to then. But uh, <laughs> no. Yeah. A, a bit slower than an hour, <laughs> but um, uh, there was less paperwork. Uh, I think for me it was more or less the same like last year, but probably I didn't write that much, um, and and I used some of the um, pa tables from last year. So for me, uh, for Bulgaria it was more or less the same, okay. maybe a little bit least. Yeah. I think it was easier because last year there were many people saying that it was like very very difficult and we get because a lot of signals along the way and there is like still we still haven't heard voices like that so but the best thing this year was we bought we gave an online um phone yeah. at the beginning it was really made things it's, it's much easier than having books yeah I think it's important uh, not to change uh, the lists of articles during the contests because yeah. it's uh, uh, difficult uh, for yes, the yeah. users they start to uh, think that uh, they know, wrote all the articles in, in one thing but then, the then they come, yeah. come new articles and someone yeah. else uh, writes them Mm -hmm. uh, and the uh, worst is when uh, someone removes articles from the list. Yeah. Users wrote articles and uh, now they... Yes, so there was a misunderstanding which we clarified at the Wikimedia conference that um, the list like, shouldn't be limited to 100. Mm -hmm. So you can add more articles to the list if you want to. Um, and that's something that we could, should clarify for next year and then like everything should be set before the contest. Uh, I would like to add here, comment here that um, we are 30 communities here in, in this contest and of course uh, there will be um, situations where uh, something like this happens. So um, uh, I would, uh, what I would recommend is would be uh, foreseeing these events in the, in the rules, uh, like saying that, you know what, um, uh, we uh, will accept all the um, articles that uh, were in the list at this point of time, yeah. or, or something like that. Mm. Sure. Yeah. Okay. Do you get the uh, Some some countries don't add to their template, yes. which we need to add to the, mm. uh, the top page. They don't add categories. Yeah. So if you want to see how many articles were created about Azerbaijan or about another country, you can't do it. Mm. For example, I saw this problem in Serbian Wikipedia yeah. when I was counting how many articles were created about Azerbaijan in the wiki. They, they had no category for it. Yeah, that's always difficult. I mean, you could do it automatically if, when, if you have the categories in place for that. Like if the article is in a certain category, you could, you could do that, but that's a different process. Like it's not as easy as like having a, having a template and then a category with the number of articles. Template is there, but there's yeah. no category. Yeah, but the question is like how do you get the category, like, or the, the topic in there? Uh, I added it manually yeah. to that template, then revert it of course. I added to account and delivered yeah. back. Maybe they don't need oh, really? this category. Yeah. Okay. In which Wikipedia was that? In Serbia. In Serbia. <laughs> <laughs> We're not aware of that. <laughs> <laughs> hmm. um, yeah, so the, the template, of course, is not ideal, but I don't see a better solution at the moment. But this is still the best way. Yeah. There are technical ways to, to do it differently, but um, I'm not skilled enough to, to, to do that. Like we, we do it for Wiki the Heim, where it's like, okay, you have enough, like a picture in this category, and it should be in a different category as well. Um, you could also do it for Sea Spring with, with the template, saying, okay, the template is in this article, and this article is like in Lakes of um, Azerbaijan. So it clearly is an article about Azerbaijan. But that's um, a bit more difficult to pull up that. Um, so, I mean, we can we can ask the questions, but it's not online anymore. Um, so, what went well before the contest or before the, the, the event? Um, what went well during the event? Like, 
So the weekly focus was something that you thought was helpful, or um, something we can improve. The, the weekly focus, like the, the blog post we did every week of the countries, like when, when I asked you to, to write about Turkey, at, exactly at the moment where the, where the, the censorship um, um, started. As an organizer, it's good for me, but not many people in uh, Pay attention to yeah. uh, They don't interview Facebook, blog, they yeah. It's interesting because we do have quite a lot of views. Like, we don't have that many people click on, on, on the blog post, mm -hmm. um, but we do have quite a lot of views. So, um, mm -hmm. I have a fundamental question about the blog. Do we need it on the first place? Because um, it seems that our popularization through Facebook is doing, like, this is the only place probably, or the main place where we are doing uh, the blog's job. <laughs> and um, if we can simply use Facebook or, um, or Meta <laughs> um, playground for, for these communications without maintaining a separate blog, because what happens now? After the end of the sea spring, until the next sea spring, there is no activity in this block. But that's not, it's not normal, like. Um, on the other side, do we really need it if we have if we have Meta and if we mainly use Facebook for sharing the link? It's it's maybe a little bit provocative question. No, but like, how do you write like um, five paragraphs on Facebook without like everyone switching off after the first paragraph? Like you have notes. And no, you, you they are clicked they not they're not showing up before the content. This is but what guarantees you that people are not just reading the announcement on Facebook and like yeah. But maybe the announcement is enough for, for many people and just reading the blog post is, is only interesting for a couple of them. Or can we use a meta page which is a bit more inviting to other people to contribute also? Because because of the well, it's a wiki. <laughs> yeah, I would say that the blog has some advantages which Facebook doesn't. It is uh, much easier to go uh, through the archived content because on Facebook, when something is published a long time ago, it is not easy to find it and go back to a certain note. Mm, also, the blog is, uh, and I'm sorry to say it, it's so much prettier than uh, a meta page, and we can <laughs> we can make it nicer. Uh, and maybe, uh, probably, uh, probably the, the great point that you make is uh, we only use it on Facebook, and maybe this is this is a good point. We have a Twitter account which is unused, which is terribly unused, uh, and <coughs> and maybe there's everything okay with the blog, but the way we share the content from the blog is not perfect, and maybe you should work on going outside Facebook because like Twitter is also a thing in many countries in many countries more popular than Facebook and maybe we, sh we should use it more to popularize the content of the blog or maybe a wiki newsletter in the way educational and blog newsletter function but so what what did you use for communication with your like um, users like is email easiest or and on Facebook yeah. Who is not on Facebook? Then we are calling. Okay. If yeah. If not, yeah. If not on Wikipedia. Yeah. Side notice will. Yeah. Or via side notice. Yeah. yeah. I mean, so that would be also a big question. Like, um, who here uses side notice for for C Spring? Okay. And it's like when you have like an information. Yeah. yeah. So do you change it at all? Every Did you during every, every week? week we okay. Like this week you can write about Azerbaijan. Yes. Yeah. 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 yeah so, we'll okay. Yeah. So would would it help to put the blog post in there, you think? Maybe <coughs> But if it's in English, uh, it can be a multilingual blog we just need people from local communities to translate. Yeah. 
Yeah, so that would like, because then you would have to translate his blog post every week, basically. And that's um, quite, a lot, quite a lot to do. And like, there were a lot of blog posts that were translated in 2016, but um, that was quite a lot of effort for a few people. And, the quick, and back then, people thought it wasn't necessary to, to translate them anymore. Um, but so, if, if English is a problem, how do your users translate the articles, or they just write articles about places without like using the, the, the list for for translations? No, they don't necessarily translate. Yeah. They, write from they just write from here. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's kind of true. Okay. Um, so, do you think that like keeping up the the, the, the blog post is a good idea? Okay. <laughs> Yeah. Then, uh, yeah. For now, not many people. I'm reading it. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> but, uh, for now, for this day, no, but it can be Yeah. Um, Maybe if we, tomorrow when we discuss about the future um, of the future of C, this kind of school, and one of the topics is going to be for a newsletter, who we need it and if we like it better. Maybe if we have a C newsletter, that would be a more natural place for people to inform. Sure. Yeah. And um, yeah. it, it doesn't mean that the blog should not exist, but like to boost it, to make it yeah. more popular, to make it more usable, because now yeah. from the from the temperature of the room, I, I guess that actually <laughs> most of the people do not know, and even if they know, they do not care about the blog. <laughs> so. Yeah. Okay. Um, are there any other like problems that you had during the contest? <coughs> so, so um, um, I, I would like to uh, talk about the rules for a couple of minutes. Yeah. Um, um, it has been pointed out in uh, Romanian Wikipedia that uh, the, the rule of um, a minimum uh, uh, 300 words, or was it 300? Yeah. So, yeah, we have a minimum of X words and uh, Y uh, um, uh, bytes, right? Yeah. Um, so it has been pointed out that this is not enough uh, because you can uh, write um, uh, um, about an actor and you can write just one uh, um, um, sentence and then a long list of his filmography. Uh, well, simply in the box. Put, uh, all the info box. Yeah. Yes, and uh, and there is no really an automatic way that I know uh, to check for this. So uh, I would just like to fish for uh, suggestions on how to how to go with, uh, about. It. <laughs> uh, you can write uh, a short write in the rules that uh, the least information doesn't count, uh, there must be uh, uh, 300 words in a uh, text. Yeah. But, but uh, how do you enforce it? You have to manually uh, uh, count it. Uh, yes, you copy the text uh, in the <laughs> word and... Yeah. Uh, we did it last year in Poland. D don't go that way. It was uh, it was a lot of manual job, which took me uh, like three hours a week to count the results of every week. Like that's what I wanted to. Yeah, it was <laughs> Chinese like, labor. This, this was like I, I hated it. <laughs> I even so my we, whole family yeah. did it. <laughs> <laughs> Exploitation of child labor. <laughs> what we did in in, in joke you just say like. Either three hundred words or I think three kilobytes of text, which is like three thousand characters. Which again can be. Yes, but, but like the the the, the, the another thing about German Wikipedia is like if you really write a short article with like a list of, of movies, for example, that that article will probably get deleted <laughs> anyway because it's not an article. So there's certain quality standards which oh, you have to okay. uphold. Okay, you have a. Uh, stricter yeah, so the whole the whole framework like supports um, just saying you have to write three hundred words or three three kilobytes because mm -hmm. like the, the normal standards guarantee that it's going to be an article in the first place. Um, 
Yeah, so kilobytes would also be an indication or indicator of, of um, like how big the article is, but then again, like it doesn't say a lot about what's in the article itself. Yeah. But but um, I, I have a big memory that we developed some method of counting actual text articles okay. when we were hunting stumps in the Swedish Okay, that would be definitely interesting to be very. Yeah. Because you so you just remove categories and at that time it was interwikilings as well yeah. that you want to remove because like that can also be couple of bytes. Yes, it is. And like every every open bracket is like four bytes. Mm -hmm. So so essentially you remove all bytes. the templates text which the infobox is. Yeah. And you count what remains. Um but like do you have any information on, on what so it's called or the tool you could use for that? But last year we were gave point to some of the Turkish checking how well it is written the Turkish the grammar uh, points, the yeah. points and uh, if the reference is relevant. So it's not only the bytes, the quality of content can could be mm. measured. But in our case, the number of articles are Yeah, so that's why in general Wikipedia we, we gave more points to bigger articles. So like you got 1.43 kilobytes, but you got um, 5.46, I think. So that made it like more attractive for people to, to write long articles. Yes, but it's all a problem. In Greek, we made a example that was a single user this year. But uh, around hundreds of articles, most of them were less than 300 uh, okay. words. words. <laughs> Not a uh, list. <laughs> yes. Text. Text. Yeah. It was okay. But uh, stamps. But we had uh, uh, luckily <laughs> to check all them manually to see if. Uh, yeah. And then uh, in the end, uh, he wasn't the winner for the. Uh, most articles. I, I guess in the end he was. but. It's uh, an issue. Yeah. For example, we didn't have a minimum of uh, characters or bytes or anything. Okay. Uh, we have different situation, which is uh, that in Serbian articles can be written either in Cyrillic or Latin text. Yeah. So uh, Cyrillic text has more yeah, bytes. More, more bytes. Yeah. yeah. So it, they were all like we promised and we did that we will transfer in them all as if they were Cyrillic. <laughs> that, that was something because it was like a not really correct to, you know, to, to not make this difference. So we had to make them all Cyrillic. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, they wrote whichever uh, script they wanted, but we measured them as if it was Cyrillic. Okay. So basically, the the the, the filling this room is that like we need a tool to to automatically like um, analyze articles. Uh, depending on, on certain para parameters that you set. Okay. And uh, uh, a quick note, uh, yeah. uh, this will not save us from automatic translation, uh, which uh, should manually be sorted and reviewed. Yeah, but those are, are others really that good that you can't like, tell right away that it's uh, automatic translation? Um, if you can automatically sort them? Or like you. At, at a glance, you could tell that it's, it's, it's not a good article, or like the, the <coughs> language is, is spotty and not. Well, yeah, that, that happens every day as part of anti-vandalism. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Uh, that's an additional effort. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Sorry. Okay. <laughs> uh, I think the tool needed to decide uh, is this article in the list? or not, because users had 150 articles, yeah. but we created it, mm. and you, you need to check one by one, is it in the list or not. If uh, we can create a bot to do this job. Or we can uh, have the uh, user write the name next to the article on the list. Uh, the ads, yes, right. I can. I need to check. Check. Is this article from the uh, suggested list? No, to the original list. Okay. Well, they can add the. Okay, roast the. 
do we have a shared understanding that uh, writing topics which are out of the lists is is not a good idea? No. I mean, no. Let, let's make, no, that, make that make depends them. on the local. We didn't. Fascist yeah. opinion. <laughs> <laughs> we allowed them to write whatever they wanted, just if it has anything to do with, a, like, certain culture or certain mm -hmm. country from C. It's just one bit difficult for the organizers to check. Uh, I don't know, it's not bad. <laughs> not. Uh, on the other hand, this is. It is our problem as well. It's uh, more not, productive not for them to. The yeah. list for guidelines, yes. merely, you know. Yeah. Because yeah. They're, they're like the help, the, like like a help. If you don't know what to write about, you can. Yeah, yeah. Do, 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 uh, yeah. Like political the, system or economic system of some countries, it's not always interesting to, to yeah, people. We put and that and as something as well. that is, you know, uh, obligatory. Not obligatory, but something that every Wikipedia should have. Yeah. But not everyone wants. That's why there there aren't any articles about that because. It's mm. not interesting to people. Yeah. I'll give an example. This year I wrote about five or six different national um, academies of sciences which did not exist. And for me, this is an article which, if it is not in the list, then there is something wrong with the list itself. Mm -hmm. So um, I, I think that sometimes when people prioritize on themselves, it's, it's actually a better decision than other people yeah. in other contests, in other languages, do it for them. Yeah, for I'm which reason I, I am very big supporter of counting all the contributions, not just those from the lists. Because we cannot uh, make a list which is, okay, this is complete list. There yeah. is definitely articles uh, beyond it, so I don't think that it should just stick to it. It just uh, makes them easier to decide what articles yeah. should they write. And that's what, like, according to power is also what it was originally supposed to be, like, just like a help. Help and guideline to for people who didn't know what to write about. Like, yeah. I, I don't have the time to to think about what I could write about. So I just like go for the list and see, okay, that might that might be interesting to me. And they might see, okay, I um, might write about geography or history or something like that. And they say singers, okay, I'm. It can be not just uh, those topics the, that are on the list, but maybe like. Uh, um, like okay, I can uh, write about singers, but not on the list about the other singers that I. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, but I've been this this up to every local organizer anywhere. I don't think we should change it. I think we should clarify what what the lists are supposed to be, because that was a bit, of, a bit confusing this year. Yeah. Okay. Um, I I haven't been yeah. there. Um, Previous in your previous discussion, yeah. but I have to say, Mickey told me that you uh, asked about those side identities. For example, this week we are uh, writing about Russia or yeah. something like that, and I must say that we didn't have, um, we didn't see those connections with the, uh, between side identities and the people writing about uh, okay. yeah. because yeah. they're writing uh, because uh, they, for example, they really write what they like, yeah. and uh, we saw, for example, that someone is interesting in Russian topics, only in Russian topics, but the others are in, I don't know, uh, what yeah, else we can... Some, some participants wrote, like, the whole competition only about Russia. Yeah. Yes. Or only about some other country. So, or they had specific, like, uh, you know, presidents of, uh, of, cur of those states, like, from CE region, and they wrote only about them, like, previous presidents of some countries. You know, it's that was the topic that they chose. So mm. I don't think that we should actually like make boundaries of what is good, what we want them to write, and what they want to choose. I think that it should be flexible. Is there a feeling that the thematic weeks, like having three designated countries per week, is a limitation? Like no, like yes. Mm. What is your? I don't your think that they are actually it is not, not respecting us. <laughs> Also, it's not needed. It, it shows that yeah, but maybe for some countries where they have a process, no, like in indeed. Poland, maybe this is this helps them. And if it doesn't, pre, if it is not an obstacle for the rest, let's keep them as a concept. I mean, you can yeah, just reframe. Yeah, so you can mm -hmm. reframe it as highlights. As a user basically. user project part of the competition, I didn't feel that like I was limited. I wrote only what I liked every week. Of course. Yeah. Sure. No. no. 
I always I have a recommended, but I'm thinking uh, maybe a special giving uh, award for uh, those users creating for every country. We have for that. every country, yeah, we also have. Be, uh, we are celebrating diversity, and one of the categories is the biggest number of different countries covered. But also the thing that Azerbaijan did, like. All the participants who write most articles about Azerbaijan, which is something promotional, you know, and then yeah. uh, we, if we put our site notice in Serbian or whichever Wikipedia, it would help them get more articles in other languages about Azerbaijan, right? So maybe, maybe these thematic weeks are in some way related with, for instance, um, National Holiday or something which is really very important for this country, which can bring attention in a mini meaningful way. So if there is some added value in having these countries designated for, for weeks, maybe this will be a bit more inviting for people to write about these countries. Because of course there will always be countries which are less covered than others by default. The problem with having thematic weeks is that they uh, somehow, because you cannot have more than three countries a week, so they somehow force us to have this contest long enough. And I don't know if this is your experience, but in Poland people feel like the contest is too long. The last weeks of the contest go very, very weak. People don't really write, so probably we could shorten it. But then keeping the thematic weeks would be very difficult because we would have to stuff a lot of countries in one week because there are small communities that write very slow. So we have yeah. to keep balance. Maybe not countries, we can divide not to countries but to topics. Uh, this week is for education. For women only for yes. 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 education. Yes. That yeah, that might be, be interesting. Maybe be yeah. Another certification which might be yeah. to reduce the last days of the competition, at least in Greek Wikipedia. Uh, I saw that not only me, but other users who took part in the competition were something like burn out. We didn't write anything. Yeah. The last seven, no, eight, nine days were a dead period. Uh, in Bulgaria it was the other way around, because the last days were the moment when there, if there is a really competitive so people, crazy, yeah. this is the moment when they can compensate for all the time lost in the beginning. Yeah. So it very much depends on the people. Yes, yeah. yeah, so... Please I would advocate against uh, um, uh, thematic weeks by topic uh, because when you have by country, uh, you, you um, and future participants already know that this is for, for these countries only. But if they will see education, they will not be informed on, on the spot that this is only about CEE region. Uh, yeah. True. Sure. But maybe you can combine it like every country. Um, submits like a few topics that they think would be interesting for their country or what they think they would like to have more articles. Okay, education in How many yes. weeks are there in the competition? Explosion. Yeah. So what if we have oh. 10 uh, fields, yeah. like politics, women, yeah. um, economics, science, yeah. Science, yeah. Yeah. what yeah. if we make 10 of those and have each week per, yeah. for that? We did not. Amazing. <laughs> so, <laughs> why not? I mean, it's just a proposal. Yeah. Like, if we divert to that, because we see, or at least some of Wikipedia see, that it's not uh, helping, so to say, to promote these countries. Uh, like, it's not thematic week. It, it's not working with the editors or participants. So, what if we <coughs> switch to this? I mean, you can still combine the two because it's just like you could use a topic and a country at the same time. Yeah, but the problem is that the, I think that, I don't know that, but I presume that the thematic weeks were invented, like the country weeks were invented to have all the countries covered at the same time so that the, the bigger countries don't get more articles than the smaller countries. Yeah. Yes. They, this doesn't work, but maybe we should find a way to address that problem so that people write the same amount of articles about uh, Bashkortostan. Bashkortostan and from Austria or Russia. Yeah. Yeah. So. yeah, that's a good idea to, um, what I should suggest would be to 
um, have, I don't know. So if we don't keep the, the countries as, as in the weeks then and use topics instead, like are we just writing about the topic in all 30 countries every week? Like the blog post would be, I don't know, 30 paragraphs long. Yes. Maybe not by topic, but yeah. everyone creates article about every, every country he wants. Yes, yeah, but like no we can with like with schematic weeks, we can highlight certain countries which are less frequently written about. Maybe. Yeah. A simple solution, which of course by definition is going to be wrong, is that probably there is given price for smaller languages for smaller countries. Maybe in the middle of the contest, uh, it is possible to look at how many are articles written for each country and for the best uh, minimum uh, amount of countries they might be promoted for the rest yeah. of uh, Yeah, so um, just to come back to, well, let's all just talk for a moment. Just come back to the topic, to the thematic weeks. What if we do like the countries and topics? Like if you can choose... But that would be like diagram, right? No, no, you have like, okay, first week is Serbia, Austria and, and Hungary, and then the topic is like education. Wouldn't that be confusing? Yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> like, uh, I'm confused by yeah. all that. They would think that they can only write about education and research. No, no, but you, you, don't, yeah. you don't combine the two, like you can choose either. Yes, I know, but yeah. I don't know if people, it would be easy to understand for people that they don't have to combine. So yeah, I'm telling you, it would, it would look like it's a diagram, you know. Yeah. Now it's Serbia and it's politics, and yeah. then it's um, Russia and then it's art, you know, yeah. something. It, people would connect it, and then they would write only about Russia and art. Yeah. It's like 300 combinations. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, sure, but Which, like... And maybe also it would be good to create a bot and I, again and a template, and add this template to project page on every wiki which participates, and uh, at the end of every week or every day to show how many articles in this Wikipedia wa was created articles about another country, for example. Another I mean, you can it will push users. He sees that yeah. no articles about Slovenia, yeah. so he, he starts creating about Slovenia. Yeah. It will be helpful. Okay. Maybe if we have about creating daily statistics which are distributed in all let me imagine without no, no, sure, 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 yes. <laughs> so if we have these daily statistics and you see the histogram like we have so many articles about Russia and so few about Bishkortostan this seeing this yes, visually yes. I'm, I'm can, can yeah. be and, yeah. and if the ideally yes yeah, so. if the set goal is like let's have all of them more or less the same or not not very big variations between the countries so you would and the topics. So you yeah. would say like the thematic weeks should depend on which countries are lagging behind and not sort the ones that are doing well. Sort of. Yeah. This, for instance in Bulgaria you, you already can see this because we have all people are um, uh, invited and I think that most of them are doing it. Not only to place a template on the top page with correctly filled all the, all the um, parameters. Uh, but also to add their contribution to um, uh, manually to, to a section, uh, country section, so that you can really now, even without the histograms, but you can see that one country is far beyond the, the others and another is lagging. So, but if there is a bit more, like, we have to think of an incentive to make it balanced. More balanced. Okay. Yeah, so Boshak, you were saying? Yeah, for uh, personal, I educate the list of uh, which country is getting more. Yeah. And I decide according to what the book. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, I very much like what Azerbaijan did. So, we talked yesterday about how countries could uh, like encourage other countries to write about them. So, we were thinking about that because what you gave was sweets, uh, local sweets, so it isn't very expensive. So if local countries said for did the same and uh, and give 
something not very valuable, not very expensive for the people who write about it, then even the smaller countries can promote themselves. Postcards? Yes, they can. Every country sends postcards. It's really very yeah. cheap and we had that for Asia. Yeah, just like the Asian part. Well, but someone has to write a postcard. Hmm? Not only postcards, maybe something. We can give freedom to, to the countries. There's always something the country can give. Mm -hmm. Well, like, it depends on the country on what they want to do. Stickers, magnets, so Yeah. Okay. So basically, I have like a page where um, there's like a list of countries and what they would send to people if they would reach a certain mark. Mm -hmm. So yeah. it's something that we should like include in grant as like expenses as well. For postal service. Yeah. If you want to have it delivered on time and not on like next week many or like next week meeting. <laughs> because when 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 the Russians write so many articles again, like you'll have to send lots of stuff to Russia. <laughs> <laughs> All our prizes were delivered in maximum in two weeks. Yeah. Ten days in two weeks. Mm -hmm. Andrei received, for example. How many days it took? Uh, about two weeks, I think. Yeah. Was it I'll like the postage? Seat. Was the postage more expensive than the present? Or? Sometimes equal. Yeah. Mm. That's interesting. Well, just some it was around to 10 me. euros to send to all these countries, to each country. Mm -hmm. Like so per, per, eight, per? Eight countries, 80, 80 euros. So probably okay. should be included in pounds. Yeah. yeah, because like postcards, no, but something that you want heavy. Yeah. Yes. Or something symbolic or personal. Yeah. Okay. Uh, okay. Wait a second. What is, what was the uh, overall uh, grant uh, amount requested? Twelve thousand. Twelve thousand, I think. So this just uh, includes another three thousand. Yeah. Or we reduce a little bit the regular prices. So yes. So something that wasn't in the in the overview is that like. So far, we've only spent like close to four thousand euros, uh, four thousand dollars um, of the money that we received. If we are sending postcards to the first three places, yeah. to the thirty countries, it's ninety. Yeah. More money. I mean, you could include it in the price, like in the four hundred dollars, mm -hmm. and just reduce the the, the overall price. Money by that. But like we are not using all the money we're getting anyway at this point. Like not before. And you said that only thirteen countries out of have already been reimbursed, which means that Yes, but we have a few chapters who don't like get money from, from that grant anyway. Were they like with Poland, Ukraine, Serbia, Austria. Were they planned to, to receive? No. Oh, okay. so, uh, because they have the budget. Yeah, and APG should cover that. So. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, but we still have like quite a lot of money left because like a few haven't received any prizes and or received any money, and a lot of communities haven't like taken the badge to the full budget. Mm -hmm. Like in Macedonia, only asked for two hundred and eighty dollars. They're not here right now, but it took them four hundred. So the question is also is like is four hundred dollars a lot or is it is it too much or is it too little or should we keep it that way? It's okay. I vote to keep. Okay. Because I mean, yeah. It doesn't make much difference to foundation person. It might make a big difference to, to your local communities. Last year for example we spent just 200 euros yeah. because we paid ourselves, yeah. but it was too much to pay. Yeah, sure. uh, but this year, we came at the house here, yeah. both from eBay and from AliExpress. So yeah. so we used all 400. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so on those thematic weeks, like we um, like agreed on. What do we agree on? So we agree on um, focusing on on countries that are lagging behind and not to say like covering countries who are well covered. Okay.
based on statistics, which we still have to... Yeah, can, can we take like from statistics the 10 countries that were not... That were like, yeah, bottom number of particles? The most confusing ones. What? <laughs> the most confusing ones, Esperanto and love. And I want to suggest participation of South Azerbaijan in this context. Is it possible if Pashirs and other countries participating? So, which are not in Europe, maybe so that the Bajan is also can. But uh, they, are in, uh, they are writing in Arabic script, Persian script. Yes, so we had this discussion last year at the C meeting um, about like where the, the boundaries are, but I think there's a general C question like where the boundaries are. But um, we had, what do we have last year? Yeah, we had, yeah, well, we had one region from Russia participating last year. Oh, Sakhar. Sakhar, yeah. Which is, Which is way, <laughs> yeah, <it's like laughs> way out there. The Google shows us that we just didn't notice. <laughs> yeah, but I think that stuff like we, what we can do is like in the prize pool, um, also um, allocate some money for for countries outside the sea region to promote like sea, um, like we had like with Farsi and um, Hebrew and, and Italian. Um, so that would definitely be possible, they just wouldn't be able to create their own list. Like that's a big difference. Yeah, we agreed upon that. Like yeah, exactly. That they can write, but they yeah. uh, cannot be written about. Exactly. Mm. So if that's fine, but then like, I don't think you see a reason why they, they shouldn't be able to. But the boundaries are still not agreed upon, or not even discussed, because it's like, Hot potato, and is it country or is it culture? Or is it yeah, well, I always talk about well, like we've been watching about communities in, in the last blog post because it was always tricky. Okay, is Kosovo a country or not? Yeah, yeah. is uh, right, Republika Srpska a country? Is um, the Crimean Tatars another country? So it's a community. So we've been sticking to community as, as a word. Mm -hmm. I think that makes it easier to, to not discriminate or like step on people's toes too much. Okay, so community is better, but then yeah, we, we don't have like Montenegrin community, we don't have... Yeah. We don't have the Slovenian community, like, that's, yeah. that's really odd, but it's only, unfortunately that's the case. Well, Tanya, no, you have to Everything come in. Is okay. <laughs> no, come, come in. Because it's the right moment for you to pitch in. Really? Yeah. Because, so... But Tanya organized uh, the, the Sea Spring contest in Farsi. Yeah. Hi, this Hi. is Mosin. I'm from Iran. Yeah. So, um, we're talking about like, um, what would it make sense to allocate money in the ground for um, contests outside of? Of course, just because of, you know, the, the best motivation for everyone is money, you see, if you get <laughs> you see. Someone said it. Yeah, of course, <laughs> you <see>. <laughs> <laughs> So postcards are good, but <laughs> that's true, but to see. That's just fun. That's over. This is a game with mom. Yeah. We agreed on sweets and postcards. I know, I know, but if you had something more serious, you see. A dollar inside it. We need yeah. <laughs> We needed it from the very beginning of the yeah, conversation. Yeah. Money makes the wicked world go round. Exactly, you see. Okay, but if that makes sense to like integrate more communities into C in in a certain way, that definitely would, would help. Yeah. I would say the CE is the most successful group of the people, regional things that we had in Wikimedia Foundation, just because of you know. Also, in many other regions, they are trying to replicate what you are doing here, but I think uh, none of them has been successful as much as you were in here. So I think that the formula that you have, it, it has to be documented. So it is a very good example for everyone else in all other regions that they want to do the same thing. Yeah. So for me, the, the main reason that I am here, I, I, I'm really trying to apply this very same thing to Asia, you see, the, the country, continent is so big, so we are planning to do the very same thing maybe yeah. in Indonesia next year. So I think the basic idea and everything is very nice in here. So I am really happy to be among you, and I got an opportunity to represent Azerbaijan at the moment, but I think uh, the model and everything is very good and very successful. Mm. So th there is a lot to learn, from this conference. Yeah. yeah. Okay, thanks. Um.
but like getting back to Sea of Springs. Mm -hmm. Yeah, of course. <laughs> um, so we now have like, um, so we now, like that's what it started last year about like including other groups. Um, yeah. But now like we we'll also include like a certain amount of money for prizes. Like, that would be great just because of the What prizes are you having in mind? You say I would like to do I, but yeah, should, should it be like four hundred dollars for like for the other ones, or should it be less? I would say like a photo book or something like that. See that you can keep it for the rest of your life. Sweet, you are going to eat it and <laughs> it's gone. You see. <laughs> well, yeah, but it's like it's. I, I, I would prefer something that would stay for a long time, just because of you know, as a reminder of your yeah. participation to that fridge magnet. Maybe, yeah, but yeah. maybe it's better to see. No, we go back to that. No, but like, I do too, but you see. <laughs> so people also motivated by like personal and sentimental gifts. So maybe, yeah, that's true. They don't have to cost a lot for them to make a huge impact. Like yeah. postcards, someone is writing a personal postcard mm -hmm. to you. That's yeah. the way it has a... I remember in Armenia, Armenia in a couple of years ago, maybe two years ago, they had that, uh, some good photos and comments and they printed them out yeah. in, in type of calendar and they gave it out. So the very same thing might be very helpful just because of, you know, at the moment we have Vicky Love Monuments almost in all countries. Yeah. So you can print out those top 10 pictures and send it to... True. Yeah. yeah. That is very useful, very helpful and your country will be remembered. Yeah, like this year oh. the problem with this. Um, any, any printing house which you approach with this will say <laughs> at least 50, at least 50 is the minimum. Um, for, for which to order? No, it depends on how you print. Maybe yeah, like we can choose depends, all uh, photos and send it to organizer, yeah. organizing team, and exactly. they will uh, publish it print in your country and send to all of yeah, so like yeah, exactly. We can print them in the cheapest country. Yeah. Which is. I think we did one? that with the Ukraine and Poland. Sure okay. What we did this year in Poland is that we started a new article contest, and the whole idea is no matter how what is the topic of the contest we would like to try to give very different prizes something that we have never given before which is cheap relatively but something very special and what we did is we uh, gave a book to editor who won we gave this very personal wiki story which was created uh, uh, especially for that person it was printed there were some articles that person wrote there was like oh, a story amazing. A story about this, some nice quotes about this, pers this person. Uh, it is a huge amount of work if you have an article uh, editor who has a, a very a big contribution, it but it is very nice to, to thing to do. Then you print a book which uh, costs like 20 euro or so, and t you give something that cannot be replicated. No one else has something like that, and the contest was a huge su success. Also, we uh, to the five other people we ga we gave a wiki gadget which was specially made for them, personalized, and it was kept secret to the very end, so people didn't know what they are fighting for. They got <laughs> they got marks with their usernames. Uh, I already know what they will get next year, but I won't. You know, I won't mm -hmm. tell. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but people were, fi uh, were fighting, and when they got the marks, they were so excited. They got a lot of. Uh, uh, that I got people asking me to do the same max for them, and they're like, oh no, 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 there are only five of them. Only five of them. So maybe it's not about money, but it's looking for something special that no one else will ever get. Yes, it's for you. It's made especially for you but with your username. That is so great, but it takes a lot of time just because of as you said, if it's a long term contributor, so it's not that much easy to provide something like that. But maybe we can make it the way which I did it for the first alumni of the Hunt Wiki Days because uh, in for the first about 20 people, after a point it was already exponential and I couldn't <laughs> keep track of all people, but for the first about 20 alumni, which means the people who completed the Hunt Wiki Days, I prepared calendars in which there was just one, so it was like 12 pages of for the months, uh, connected with one page which collect, it was like a collage of Images from their own hundred wiki days. Okay, um, yeah, okay. some people here got the rest. So maybe from these contributions in the sea spring, those who have performed best per country or per topic or per um, community, whatever we can define it later, uh, maybe they can get such a personalized um, um, either book 
or or oh, such a calendar, calendar which, which okay. just contains images from their own articles in their in their languages because it's going to be something yeah very personal and very exclusive yeah. and um, and one which especially if not announced in in advance that it's going to be like book calendar or mug with these pictures is going to be interesting incentive for people to Join. Yeah, also it has a very good promotional value because people posted on Facebook pictures of their prizes and then people learned about the contest. Yeah. Okay, so um, I'm not quite sure how this happened, but we only have five minutes left. <laughs> <laughs> so what went wrong? Quickly! Yes. So, to get through the other topics, I'm sorry, like, I, that's really weird. Um, so, um, well, I also wanted to talk about this for, for a few minutes or for, for a short time. Like, um, the grant or like the grants needs a fiscal sponsor because like we need a uh, an entity that the foundation can hold accountable if things go wrong. That's basically what we need. Makes sense. Just you have to know someone in behind. So at the moment, Wikimedia Austria is doing that. Um, there is the issue of like the the process does take some time, and um, that time is something that this year we we don basically donated to the to the Sea Spring. But um, it would be helpful in, 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 in the next few years to to have something more stable in the sense of like um, adding funds for for the overhead work to the to the C Spring grant, just to make it a bit more reliable and to have like a, a, a stable like overhead for that. Um, so it would be something rotating. Um, not necessarily because <coughs> because of legal reasons. It make, probably makes sense to keep in Austria, yeah. um, but it would be helpful if we could like um, build some overhead of that on on the on the seat spring ground. What exactly do sense. you need? Like our community decision that yes, we approve or in some way um, endorse. Yeah, or well, like uh, if you if you in the room can think that's a good idea. Uh, is do. is our voting in or whatever endorsement I wouldn't, I wouldn't enough, or we have to like. Sign in a meta page, say um, under this statement. Well, if if everyone here thinks that's that's a, a good idea to do, we can just add it to the grant next year, and then like in the grant proposal, people can endorse it anyway with like the the full budget. Is there anyone who is against this? And I have to say that this is the first time when I hear this proposal, so this is not a like a recited <laughs> dialogue between the three of us. No. <laughs> but yeah, is there someone who is basically against such an idea? No, why should we just because of you know it makes sense just because of if you know that something is for sure is happening and there's someone who is applying for that and everything is in order. Why should someone again be against it? Because like of, you know, for example I was satisfied with how the reimbursement process went this year. I was that okay. And because we are different people with different perspectives and someone may bring yeah. Issue which we have to so. I also were with them. We were for recycling this conversation. <laughs> but no, I mean, really. But I mean, like for the foundation, like uh, the, funda the feedback we get from the foundation is like that they are really um, amazed by the whole thing, yeah, and it is kind of amazing in itself. Like writing five thousand articles in three months about like third countries or communities in in the sea regions. And it is funny, we, we have a one editor in Farsi Wikipedia who wrote only about Estonia like 1,000 article. Yeah. Yeah. And I asked Estonians to give him a prize, and it has been almost a year that they are trying to decide to send him something. <laughs> <laughs> you wrote 1,000 articles about Estonia. Maybe more. Actually, the total number of articles is around 5,000, I think. Carol will write uh, this person a song. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> the problem is that you cannot trust Estonians. We never keep your problem. <laughs> okay, but if that's okay for everyone in this room, I know a few. We'll, we'll yeah. add it to the grant proposal and then like, you can still change your mind if, if you feel like that's not necessary. Okay. Okay, um, so we're at the end actually, um, which is a shame because we should be talking about way more. Just, but the um, coffee break is 30 break. minutes, so you can actually continue the discussion for some time. Um, so is there anything that someone wants to change for next year that, that needs changing uh, immediately? Like, or is the contest that it is now, like in third year, was it like a tried and trust format that like works without a hitch? No, I had the questions. Do we have any jury trial at the moment? Every country has their own jury. Okay, but so this is different, but I want something centralized, just because if you know, that okay. we can, if you're comparing two articles in two different languages, 
So there should be a like central way to compare this and understand. By well, which way? Yeah. Like number of device, I don't know. Maybe number of the pictures is added to the article. But we, we have, so we had a, a example before, like things in Latin script are way smaller in kilobytes than like in Cyrillic. So, so this is the computer thing. You can find a way to like multiple something to that yeah, number. Yeah. Yeah. It is not something that's yeah. The problem would be that these people in this international jury will need to know at least like seven, eight languages in order to make a reasonable comparison. And we have very, very different languages in the region. And I don't think that we can claim understanding, good understanding of the uh, other context, uh, contexts or other, how, how well uh, an article was written in another language. So that probably the national juries are doing their we, we have to rely that they're mm -hmm. working well. I'm pretty sure that all of them are doing a good job, but this is a matter of <coughs> them. This, they are not doing a bad job. But I think having that such a tool, it would be great just because of, you know, it adds a lot of ability. It's not only CE, maybe in other region, other competences, you know, we would have yeah, other... Yeah, sure. We can use that. I mean, we, we talked earlier about, like, having a, a, a tool for the local organizers to count the, the bytes and the quotes, or judge the quality of an article. Um, a very good first step would be if local organizers are taking more, are being more participative in the uh, in the organizational part on the international level. Because what happens now, for instance, about writing blog posts is that we are rotating like three, four people. Uh, but again, this is very limited points of view, very limited contributions. So uh, even now, and um, I'm sorry that. Tamash is no more here, but uh, when I when I, when we asked for contribution for the report, the final report, we only had two people contributing with answering to, to this email, which was sent three weeks ago. So I don't think that <laughs> I, I actually think that if local organizer are con organizers are contributing more in these moments when they were explicitly asked for contribution, this is going to be a very good first um, step. Yeah, but like we did it last, this this year with, with Bashak and, and Turkey, that I, I asked mm -hmm. her to write something about yeah, Turkey. Yeah, and, and this is and how, how we have this. If that's something that we could do more often, that would probably mm -hmm. be nice. Yeah. Well, not more often in terms that... What no, 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 what, but like more <laughs> <laughs> uh, Yeah, I'm sorry, I have to say about uh, Vasya's for the report, uh, we did saw did see it, but it was like the final week of August, right? And it was full of uh, like our annual plan and everything and uh, strategy. 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 Yeah. We were like really structured to yeah. all the. Uh, Can you try now until the like the end of next week? Because we had this extension in the in the. Um, oh. Um, or maybe you could sit down with them afterwards and just write down a few. I don't think that's no. uh, maybe it's better. Yeah, 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 I'll just do it. Yeah, yeah. Really okay. We are tired. Um, do yeah. it in your time, but like, for instance, by the end of next uh, week, we're going to try that. Yeah. So but that we can yeah. really have um, not only our international organizers, like the, the very few people, <laughs> but also local, local input and local stories. This is about storytelling, and you know that the foundation is very keen on uh, storytelling and, yeah. and yeah. learning. Yeah, but like the five thousand articles already tell a pretty convincing story anyway. Well, yeah. maybe, but also maybe um, we are missing. Maybe something. it's a lot of points. No, it's we set a record this year, six hundred and sixty yeah. for the Serbia. Yeah. I mean, that would be a cool highlight, like to highlight that like the, the articles were less than last year, but like certain communities. This is um, what we need, the deltas, the pluses, the, to, to, in order to have... Yes, that's why, that's why I need the statistics. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but that's what we need to do. Maybe you um, have a very cool no. new contributor, new, yeah. new editor who was recruited because of this. Um, but maybe it like, would be okay for if the international team would like contact you and ask you to, to write like a paragraph about your country for a blog post or something. That's great. Please do. Even even if you are I mean, you don't have to say yes. No. Even if you're highlighting you problems, even okay. if you're like uh, highlighting things that need to be changed, not 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 uh, not only the good things, but maybe even the problems that you faced. So yeah. 
a bit more specifics like the meat uh, inside the skeleton which the reporting latest right now. We need meat. Um, yeah, but it's, like, it's, it's not that big of an issue. I would kind of we still haven't started driving that yet. That I would like put for discussion is that uh, we need to motivate countries to apply to be hosts of this conference just because at the moment it, is, it seems that um, oh, this is only a limited number of the countries that they are going to bid for the, to host this conference for next uh, year and the upcoming one. years. So wait, wait, this is a stream discussion. Yeah, but maybe he has some relation. To okay, so so this gets to the point. Yeah, but just because of you know, I think for next year and the upcoming years. Yeah. So uh, if we can rotate something and we can ask others to host, and just because of you know, I think having an international conference, uh, it would motivate a lot of people to work. Be like to talk to each other, to work with each other, to... Did the fact that the conference, uh, C conference is taking place in Poland this year motivate more Polish people to contribute more for the C spring? No. Is there some... No, it wasn't really... Dependency? No, it wasn't really related, no. So... Uh, Just because when you have a common goal, generally, it makes more people to work together and try to... Maybe not so much. Online. No, online. Yeah. It doesn't matter, but... Are there people in who who would like to be part of the international organizer committee next year? Sorry, international of the, or CE to, to be like one oh. of us. I mean, we didn't we didn't like we didn't list up what the international organizers do, but it's basically like um, taking care of the, the the Facebook page and the and the blog posts and the social media stuff. And, and writing the reporting in. And writing the grants and the reports. About the C conference, right? No, C spring. No, no, no. spring. C spring. C spring. Okay. Yeah, we're still on. But we still have time for that. Like we have six months to. Yes, yes, but maybe this is a good moment yes, to, to you, recruit people. If you're interested. I know that Georgi would like to. It's not. It's <laughs> nice not very try. much time consuming. It's sometimes even fun. Sometimes we even need to watch Eurovision together. We even forced Basia to watch Eurovision, which was kind of traumatic, but she managed. <laughs> oh, yeah, I managed to bait that. Did you like yeah, so on? like Philip skipped that. Um, Daniel, you said something different during the contest. <laughs> <laughs> no, like uh, it's fun. <laughs> no, like actually, in the, a very perverted way. Uh, international organizing team was fun. The local organizing was. This was Not so fun! <laughs> now she's doing international communication, you don't have to tell us about the Polish media. <laughs> I had a follow-up on, on what uh, Vaisa said. So basically, reporting, you know you have to do it. Are, there are many months past since the meeting, the end of that. And it's it's kind of weird to say that we now have this APG thing and then must have, we just have to put it into our plans to have uh, the things ready. It's, it, the logical way to have this reporting happen is that uh, the international committee gets all the numbers and all the stuff automatically and maybe follow up with some question if they, if they see that there is a good point to be added into the report or, or something like this, good, good story point perhaps they see in the numbers. So this is, this is a normal way and also if we, if we would do this in that way we actually could energize these people who are doing it internationally, and it's also a token of respect. So I would, I would, uh, I would really like to see uh, us, uh, and, and this is also something I, I will have to do personally. But but to, to start keeping the promises, and if you sign up to the competition to be part of that, take the full responsibility to also provide the numbers. It's it's not that uh, hard. Mm. We now have kind of tools for that, and it's. It makes sense uh, for uh, for people to go through their country, their community, which they know, rather than having international organizers uh, stress on that and losing valuable human resources, uh, resource times. Yeah. We have to start uh, valuing the people that we have in CEE, and and if we do that, then we can have much bigger, much bigger things uh, happening. So so just out of respect, please. Send the international but kind of, it's, not, it's not easy in Russian, for example, when you have 1,000 articles to count. That's, that's, that's one hour if you count them manually. <laughs> <laughs>
Well, you can talk to, <laughs> to the Russian local organizer of that. Yeah, but uh, <laughs> let them uh, fix the bot that they created or update Facebook. They have, yes, they have, no. they, they have we, tech we, people. We talked about that. that yeah, but that doesn't matter. It's, it's, uh, it's something that uh, we should do out of respect towards each other and, and this would be a normal sure. thing to do. So please see people grow up and let's continue in a much better way. Okay. Thank you. And with that, thank you. <laughs> Um, and if you have any other questions you want to talk to any one of us, please do. Like we're still here until tomorrow. Do we have some magician that scan? Yes. Do we hear yes? Yeah, yeah. Okay, can you? Okay, you think well, thank you. Yeah, thank you. Let's take a picture.